Well, thank you all for joining us and allowing us here today. Um, this panel was put together um, because of our unique situations in regards to being displaced or dislocated workers. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about our experiences, um, the services we utilized, uh, advice for job seekers as well as employers, um, and, and hopefully we could kind of share the information that led us through our, our very different uh, opportunities and different, very different challenges that we had. Um, so before we get started, I'd just like to introduce myself and the panel. My name is Bill Burke. I'm the Vice President of Student and Academic Affairs at Johnson College. Thank you, Bill. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Von Onen, and I'm Director of Employment Services with Goodwill Industries of Northeastern PA. We provide career services and digital literacy skill classes for people with intellectual and develop developmental disabilities, as well as people involved in the drug and alcohol and mental health courts of Lackawanna County. And I'm Dorothy Grell. I'm a youth instructor at PA CareerLink Lackawanna County, where I work with 17 to 24 year olds who are out of school, either to get their GED, advance in training, or get placed in the workforce. Thank you, Dorothy and Chris. Um, so to get started, because we do have really different paths uh, between each of our situations, I'm just going to ask Chris, kind of tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the situation when you were dislocated, displaced, you know, the services you utilized, and, and just tell us a little bit about, you know, your journey. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Bill. Um, so I was working in the book publishing uh, business um, prior to the last recession. And when the economy took a turn for the worst, I was laid off. And within two weeks of being laid off, I was also diagnosed with cancer. So what I thought was going to be a short-term unemployment turned into a three-year gap in my, uh, in my resume history. So eventually, I got to the point where I was feeling better and it was time to go back to work. And I thought, geez, I could do this. I have no problem. You know, I've, I've always been successful on my own. So I went out with the strategy of going to all the job boards that were out there, Indeed, Career Builder, Monster, and I put together a resume, and I just blasted it out there to anything that I was remotely qualified for. Well, needless to say, that was a very poor strategy, and it didn't work well for me. Um, so what happened was I ended up actually taking a step backwards and took a position with a local manufacturing company at a significant decrease in, in salary from where I was before. At that time when I was job searching, I wasn't aware of all the services that were available in this area, CareerLink, EOC, um, you know, your local college, uh, if you, you go to their career placement. Um, you know, I didn't make use of the resources that were available some of them I didn't even know about. And needless to say, that strategy really wasn't the best. Great. Thanks, Chris. So coming from uh, long-term unemployment and underemployment, um, Dorothy, you could kind of tell us about your situation, too. That's kind of sure. somewhat similar but still different. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I was a K-5 through uh, special educator in a local school district when I became a displaced worker. Again, like Chris said, I felt like it was going to be a short-term unemployment because I had my master's degree, I thought I was on top of the world. Um, looking back, I was very naive and very um, arrogant <laughs> in my thinking. So very similar to Chris, I didn't utilize the services. I thought I had the answer. After serving a year and a half on unemployment and having to take a major step back, I applied out of desperation because my funds were running out to a job where I was going to be an adjunct instructor for one class. It was a physical education class, but through the director giving me that chance, um, it did take five years before I was fully um, reemployed as a full-time worker in one location Great. of working part-time at different colleges yeah. and things like that. Great. Well, thank, you know, thanks for sharing that story. Um, my story's a little bit different. Uh, I had an advance notice uh, that my job was going to be closing, so probably a good nine months ahead of time. Um, and, and working at, uh, for a career college, I was familiar with some of the services that were offered and some of the techniques that we kind of trained our students to use, whether it was you know, networking and building those relationships within the community. But um, like kind of Chris mentioned, some of the services that were provided to us, um, the CareerLink provided the rapid response service um, to help those. Uh, you know, who maybe were displaced a little bit earlier. Um, for me, for myself, knowing that I had that nine-month span, 
um, to really kind of look for work. I, I put all those skills into place that I learned while working at the school. Um, networking, kind of getting my, res you know, getting my resume out there, talking to people that I knew, and actually landed the position I'm in because of, uh, you know, a friend of mine recommended the position um, that I currently hold now. So um, I think whether or not you're long-term unemployed, um, uh, underemployed, or, you know, you have advance notice, I think there's a lot of services and, and uh, out there that job seekers and employers can, can recognize. So from my perspective as well, um, working for uh, various different colleges, there's a lot of services that colleges could provide to employers um, who maybe are seeking, uh, you know, have an open in the workforce, in the workforce that they can't necessarily um, fill, uh, as well as those who e are either underemployed or unemployed long term, there is training opportunities available out there, whether it's um, funding through the career links or OVR, um, and then, you know, kind of tackling on uh, some additional advice. I want to kind of touch base with, with both of you guys. And what advice would you guys have for job seekers or um, employers for, you know, dealing with dislocated workers based on your current experience and in your current positions? You guys both have a lot of uh, experience with that. Chris, you want to start? Yeah, thanks, Bill. Um, so I recently saw a little quote, and it said, the hardest prison to escape is your own mind. And I really thought hard about that, and I, I put myself back to when I was a dis, uh, displaced worker, long-term displaced, and it was so true because I thought, you know, I could do this myself, and, you know, I'm proud. I don't need help. Well, you know, it doesn't hurt to have help, and I wish I had reached out to some of the resources that were out there. So, you know, don't get locked in that mindset, you know, um, I could do this myself or I don't need help. Um, there's a lot of free services out there. One of the other things that I, I learned, um, and I knew this from publishing, but I didn't apply it in, in career search, was I used to do a lot of copy uh, writing and a lot of editing. And so when I read something, I would read what I thought I put on the paper. I wouldn't notice the mistakes. So when I was sending my resumes out, they're loaded with mistakes, but I saw what was in my mind's eye, not what was actually on the, the computer monitor. So reach out, get that help, take your resume, and you know make several copies of it. Tailor it for the position you're applying for. Um, and then the big tip, network, network, network. And everybody talks about networking. I know everybody, you know, it kind of sounds funny. Oh, you've got to go to this cocktail party, or you've got to go here, or, or this event. But it, it could be as simple as a conversation with maybe, you know, your child's softball coach or somebody you went to school with or a neighbor or a friend. Get out, ask those questions, have those conversations. You're going to find that there's stuff going on in your area, in your community that you don't even know about. And that conversation could be the key to bringing it to your attention. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Chris. And You're Dorothy, what, what, what advice would you give? Um, definitely for the job seeker, like Chris said, don't try to do it on your own. There are services out there that will help. Um, CareerLink, EOC, both have trained counselors available to help you. Like Chris mentioned, have someone else look at that resume. Talk to people. No one likes to go to a networking event, especially when they're feeling down. But there are great resources in this area, such as NEPA networkers, um, the chambers, events. Your college might be having young alumni mixers, things like that. Definitely get out there and network. Finally, I would say definitely for the job seeker, look at the point of when you're out of work as a time to kind of give back to your community. So volunteering, because again, you never know where you're going to meet that next person that's going to make that next connection for you. And plus, it's additional skills that you can put on your resume that show that you're doing something while you were furiously looking for your next employment opportunity. Yep, I think that's a great point. So I think networking is a, is a big part of it. And Chris, you kind of mentioned it. Um, I think some of the greatest networking, of course, can be done at networking mixtures with, sponsored by the chamber, um, but also on the bus, you know, walking through town. You kind of build those relationships. Um, when it comes to uh, other opportunities for job seekers, there's funding, I mean, there's funding that's available for some people to obtain training. Um, I know colleges like Johnson College all the time work very closely with the career links to help those students, um, you know, kind of match skills and with employers. So on the flip side, when it comes to employers, um, I know Dorothy had mentioned this in, in prior conversations was don't look at that employment gap on somebody's resume as, as a red flag, right? I mean, you take a chance on somebody who has 
um, you know, either a gap in employment or who's underemployed, uh, because those people sometimes are, are very, um, you know, very hardworking and, you know, very, very motivated to succeed. I think uh, uh, another big point for uh, employers and industry uh, professionals out there when looking for dislocated or dis displaced workers, um, one thing you can do is reach out to your local colleges or, or, or universities or trade schools and, and tell them what you're looking for as far as skills, um, because um, for the most part, colleges can customize um, a program that meets your needs and then work with the community, uh, whether it's the CareerLink or other services, to provide funding for these um, individuals looking for those jobs. And then, you know, kind of have that built-in relationship with those schools to provide um, a, a feeders to the, for, for that workforce to kind of, um, you know, meet, meet their, their demand and what they're looking for. So it's very customizable, and I think that's something that, you know, maybe... Um, uh, industry professionals aren't really aware is out there from colleges, but for the most part, they're they're ready and willing to, um, you know, provide assistance any way they can. So I think, I mean, I think that's definitely great advice from the panel here. And I think to kind of summarize and bring this all home, um, whether you're right out of high school or you know lose your job after being on the job for 30 years, there are a number of services available within that community. Um, obviously, networking is something that, you know, somebody who's been tenured and working out, it, it takes a long time to do, but I think it's a lot easier when you take advantage of those resources um, ahead of time and while you're, you know, while you're also still employed, I think that's important. Getting involved, volunteering, all really good ways to uh, network. Um, in addition to community resources, I mean, if you're not sure where to go, start off at the chamber and, and ask them or, or ask the career link, um, you know, what services are available for, you know, each unique situations, uh, each unique situation. So I think, you know, whether you're right out of high school, uh, uh, have, have some sort of disability, um, even re-entering the workforce from, uh, you know, maybe incarcerated, there are services available to you, um, and it's just a matter of kind of opening up and, and seeing uh, what's out there and, and really asking questions.